Hey crafters, thanks for being here today. We are diving into a little more sewing, a little more costuming, a little more asking the question, is it clothes? Is it costumes? Could you blur the line between the two? Now I know everybody's tolerance for costume or not costume or clothing is gonna be different for every single person. So what is clothing to me might be costume to someone else or vice versa, but it is kind of the costumey time of year. And although holidays have been kind of turned upside down these days, that doesn't have to necessarily stop us from at least wearing costumes as clothes, possibly, once in a while. Anyway, that's my logic hmm. going into some of these sewing projects. I am kind of diving into a little bit of the historical nature, although I'm not an expert on fashion history, and I'm also going to be taking some modern shortcuts that make these garments not historically accurate. I'm going for more of historically inspired, hopefully still kind of wearable for today. So there's my caveat out there. I know a lot of our historical sewer people are going to know all the ways that these outfits are not historically accurate. I'm just, I'm going to be okay with that because I know with my sewing skills and the wearability issues, I'm not going to be able to make these perfectly accurate, but I do want to have some fun with the idea of prairie core. Yeah, you might have heard of this uh, over the last couple of years. I've heard bloggers and, and YouTubers reference it and some fashion articles on this subject. Um, you might have also heard of cottage core, kind of this aesthetic of uh, long flowy dresses, kind of peasant, uh, prairie, loosely inspired, um, you know, puffy sleeves and ruffles. And I've seen, you know, gorgeous, gorgeous Instagram photos of girls with long hair and hair bows and really flowy dresses in fields. And, you know, it's just very beautiful, especially during, you know, hard times in the world. It's kind of fun to you know, just see these these images that are so beautiful and, and fun. And they got me thinking back to back in the day <laughs> when this used to be cool before, you know, remember <clears throat> 80s and 90s people? Do you remember those like poofy dresses and kind of like pinafores and Laura Ashley prints and stuff? Anybody remembering that? <laughs> yes, well, I was the kid that wanted to be Laura Ingalls Wilder every day. So I kind of dressed like that just as my own personal aesthetic. Granted, since then, I don't know if it was really even that cool then. I don't think it was. But since then, those long dresses have just become completely uncool, almost revoltingly uncool for decades. And now somehow they're back. The world has rediscovered them. So good job, world. Not a very um, original choice, but I am glad to see that this aesthetic, this mood is back because I remember how fun it was to wear these dresses and they kind of inspire you to act like the character you're dressing like. I mean, they're, they're swishy, they're comfortable, depending on the fabric, they can be just super breathable. They don't have to be super tight or form-fitting, you can have a lot of movement in them. And you kind of feel sort of like somebody in a story or, you know, a Disney character or something. And once in a while, who says that's a bad thing, even for adults? So, Prairie Core. <laughs> I'm going to dive in a little bit, try to fulfill my childhood aesthetic of loving this look and kind of connect in with my Laura Ingalls Wilder side. Might even be able to wear these around spooky season and costume season a little bit. And I do have more motivation. I'm also a teacher and I'm hoping to use some of these costumes in some of my historical lessons just to kind of weird out my students a little bit and <laughs> make them be like, hey, what? what's going on? So um, yeah, I'll be using these at work <laughs> myself and um, hopefully wearing them for fun as well. So up for today in our Prairie Core aesthetic search, I've discovered this pattern, and of course I will link to it down below, but um, this is a costume pattern, and as you can tell, there, there are a lot of different looks you can do from this one pattern. There's kind of a prairie look, kind of pilgrim, kind of going colonial, 
etc. And um, I will also link to a really great article from a blogger called The Pragmatic Costumer, who took this pattern that you know isn't historically accurate. It's designed for a modern costume creation. But she took this pattern and then modified it into more historical looks for various eras. And I was totally inspired by that. I will link to her post because it's really fun. And as a beginner sewer, it was fun to see someone take a pattern and then modify it into more, more historical looks. Those are skills I need and I appreciate that from her. So I'm not going to be going for specifically historically accurate as I've already said. So I think I'm going to take this kind of prairie dress pattern and modify it into something that looks historical-ish but might also be kind of fun to wear. So there's my goal, this one. Now I have do dove, doven, doven. I dove into this pattern already. I cut out the pieces, I did a mock-up, and then I also did a first dress with this pattern. Sorry guys, the first time I try a pattern, it's just mayhem, and you don't need to see that. I just need to be able to be okay with making every mistake in the book and having it take way too long. So the first time I did this project, it did take too long, and I did do some things that I want to fix the next time I do this dress. So I was looking at the sizing on the back of the dress and I realized that the dress size um, needed by my bust size was going to be bigger than the size that would be needed um, just going by like my waist measurements. And that's usually the case. It's one reason I have to usually make mock-ups of patterns because I usually have to combine two sizes uh, to get it to fit me. So I looked at that and then I looked at the dress and I realized that the dress, at least on the model, looked really fitted. Um, almost like kind of a Victorian fit on the bodice, just, um, yeah, quite, quite snug. And I was going for something a little bit looser, a little more wearable, a little easier to move around in. So I thought, well, maybe I'll take the larger size that would go with my bust size. Maybe I'll just make that dress. And then I kind of got a little bit over eager, I guess. And I decided, well, I'll just size up entirely. So instead of taking the bigger size that I would be, I'm going to jump to the biggest size, the next bigger size after that to see if I can get something that is more comfortable because this looks quite tight in the pattern. So I did a mock-up of that and it seemed to fit pretty well. Like it was roomy, but it seemed like it would give me some movement. And then I made a dress with that. So let me show you that. Whoa. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit hard to see. I know it's quite different from the pattern picture, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with some of the, like the way this is turning out, although I do want to change some things. So as you can see, it's, um, it is fitted. It has some darts. Actually, you probably can't see that. It's probably hard to see. Um, it has a very full skirt. I changed the sleeves. I made them puffy. I also changed the neck and made that more of a scoop. So when I tried this dress on, I realized that it actually was pretty big. Uh, it was too big in the shoulders and it actually was pretty big under the arms and at the waist. So I do like this dress. I feel like it's really comfortable. It just looks a little bit off to me. So just on my body, the size big looks a little bit too big. So what I think I'm going to do with this dress is I'll probably make a sash and just kind of belt it a little bit to take care of that and I'll just be fine with it being a little bit more roomy. But the next dress I think I'm going to actually go with the size that would correspond with my bust size which is probably on the bigger end of the size that I need. This was a whole size bigger than that. I'm going to go and try to stick with my, what my bust measurement size would be and just see if that will kind of take in the sleeve, the shoulders a little bit, take in the sides just a little bit, hopefully get a, you know, just a more well-fitted look. We'll see. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I should probably make a mock-up of that bodice just to double check it and compare. <clears throat> I hope I don't live to regret the choice not to do that. <clears throat> I usually do. Um, I do, however, like the shorter sleeves. I made a little cuff and made them puffy. 
I think I will probably do that again. I like the more scoop neck. I think it looks a little bit, I don't know, slightly less Victorian. Uh, the skirt though, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> that's so much skirt. <laughs> don't get me wrong, my inner 10 year old is thrilled with the amount of swoosh in this skirt. I think it'll be really fun to wear, but I think it's just a little much for a more wearable look. So I think the next time I do this dress, I'll also use less skirt fabric. I might even take it in like, gosh, I don't know, like five or six inches on each panel. There are three panels of fabric in this skirt. So I think I will probably reduce each one a bit and still have enough poof. So that's where I'm at with this pattern. I need to go to the craft store. I need to see if I can find some have historical looking fabric. We'll see what they have. I'm definitely thinking more cotton and such to hopefully get um, a, a really breathable, comfy dress. And of course, I'll need to get the zipper. And oh, I did actually finish the neck with um, bias tape, excuse me, um, which wasn't required in the pattern, but I'm weird. I like putting on bias tape. So I'll need some of that, I'll need a zipper, I'll need the fabric, and I'll check back in with you guys so we can dive in and start dress number two <laughs> and pursue our prairie core ideal. Um, wish me luck, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a bit. Ooh, I'm liking all the browns. That's cool. Oh, wait, it's shiny. That doesn't work. <laughs> Turkeys for the win. <laughs> wow. Too many choices. This, this might take a while. Oh, boy. Okay come back to the browns. I think it might have to be this one. It's a little bigger print than I was thinking, but I like the color. I like that it's kind of brownish, but a little pinkish. Kind of multi-seasonal. I think that'll do it. Yes! Good morning, you guys. It's the next day. Last night, I got back from the craft store, I washed and dried the fabric, ironed it, which took forever, and then I did cut out the pieces. I wanted to show you the pattern, just so you kind of see the pieces I'm dealing with. Um, skirts, pieces are pretty big. I've been kind of using less skirt <laughs> than there is. I think I took off about three inches off the sides of the pieces and then of course the fabric for those is doubled so that means I reduced the panels by about six inches each just to try to make that skirt a little less poofy um, and then we of course have the bodice pieces I am using the smaller size this time which I hope works well I also on the front bodice I decided against doing that kind of V waistband so I was just doing kind of a straight across bodice there and then for the sleeve, this was kind of fun. So I took the sleeve pattern. This is actually the long sleeve and it unfolds to, you know, a really long sleeve, but I'm just using part of it. I'm just using the top part of the sleeve. And I actually use the largest size sleeve the, for the size 22. So that's bigger than my dress size, but I wanted to make a puff sleeve. So using the bigger sleeve pattern seemed to work. So I'm trying to think, I think that's most of the modifications I made. I also started doing a little bit of sewing once I cut the pieces out. So let me show you those, show you where we're at, and um, we'll get started. Well, here are the pieces I have so far and the pieces that I have sewn together so far. Let's look at the bodice. First thing I did after wondering why on earth I bought a piece of fabric that had vertical and horizontal stripes, 
yeah, it took a while to line up the pattern with that pattern <laughs> correctly orientated. If you're doing this pattern for the first time, do something with an overall print and save yourself the headache. I got it pretty close to straight and center, but anyway, just top tip. So once I got it cut out, I sewed the darts on the front and then the back of the bodice. I also did the shoulders and the side seams. So there's the back where the zipper's gonna go. There's the two back panels and their darts. And then I started working on getting one of the sleeves in there, as you, you can see over here. Let's check out this sleeve. And here's our sleeve, inside out, of course. Let's see if we can uh, zoom in a little bit. Take a better, better look here. I did some basting stitches along the top in the seam allowance. And these are just really big stitches. And in order to fit this sleeve into the whole armhole of the bodice, I'm gonna do a little gathering using these stitches. Of course, this sleeve is supposed to be puffy. We made it kind of big. So gathering these little threads in here, let's see if I can get a hold of it. I'm just pulling on one of the the bottom threads here. I think I, the lower set of stitches, one thread from that, I'm just pulling on that. So I'm gonna scrunch that up a little bit. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to do that all around the top part of the sleeve, and then I'll pin it into the armhole and stitch that in. You can also see I have some little bands of fabric down there, which I'm hoping to sew onto the end of the sleeve as I, well, I'll gather that in, but add a little seam band to make a cute little puff sleeve. So there's the sleeve. I think the sleeve is my next step to get this last sleeve in. But let me show you the bodice really quick too. <laughs> I'm learning all these cool tips here as I go. So when I was sewing the darts, I remembered a top tip I was given. Um, I used to sew darts in a way where I backstitched at the bottom of the dart and I tried to backstitch at the top to hold that stitching in place that of course led to really weird points on the darts and I had to redo them so many times so top tip learn from my mistakes I guess what you're supposed to do is sew right off the edge of the dart and then use the little tails of thread Let's see if you can see it there to tie the tip of the dart off manually so that thread doesn't come undone so there's my top tip learning experience of the day let's get our sleeve into the armhole over here and then i think the next step will probably be to tackle those giant pieces of fabric back there which are going to become the skirt Well, we got the sleeves in. Now it's time to turn this giant tube <laughs> of fabric into the skirt. That's three panels stitched together along the side seams. We're kind of looking at the back seam right here where I didn't stitch all the way to the top because the zipper will extend into the skirt. Oh, it's hard to see the whole thing. Oh, that's a lot of fabric. So the next step, 
and I've already started a bit of this. The next step is to get some really long lines of stitches going along the top of the panels so that I can then gather up the fabric from the top and then stitch it to the bodice of the skirt. So time for some big long stitches, time for some gathering, and then time for lots of pinning. <laughs> Well, she's starting to look like a dress. I got the skirt on, and then I ended up doing a little bit of top stitching right along the outside. I also made the neck bigger because the neck in the pattern is quite high. So I experimented, tried it on, cut the neck hole a little bigger, and then kept trying it on until I liked what I got. And as you can tell, I've got a zipper that has been basted into the back. Okay, let's talk zippers for a moment. <clears throat> Bear with me. So, zippers are not my favorite thing in the world, and I'm only recently becoming better acquainted with the zippering process. Wow, there is so much fabric in this dress. Not the first time I've noticed. <laughs> okay, well here we are, we're on the back. If you were to look at the front, of the dress. You wouldn't really see the zipper. It's been kind of basted to the back and I'm going to then turn the dress correct way out, use my zipper foot and stitch theoretically an even distance from that opening down what is both sides of the zippers. Blah, 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 blah. I will attach a link to one of my favorite zipper installation tutorials because I can't describe this to save my life, but they can. Um, just a cool note of something that I have noticed that is not in that video and it took me far too long to discover this. <laughs> so you stitch down the sides with your zipper foot, oops, oh, excuse me, You're stitching down the sides of your zipper, right? But any time, let's say you, you'd like gone down, you have done the bottom and you come back around. Anytime you go past the zipper stop, it's going to push the 
foot out around it because it, it's so big and poofy. So to avoid massive quantities of frustration, stitch up close to it. Then you're going to have to unpick this, this uh, temporarily basted seam. Pull the zipper pull out of your way <laughs> into an already stitched area. Then keep stitching past it. <sighs> an embarrassing amount of time was spent learning that lesson. But anyway, so I'm going to go jump on over to the sewing machine. Here's what she looks like on the other side. I'm going to turn this dress back right side out. Put on my zipper foot and have some zippering fun. <laughs> Wish me luck. a few days <clears throat> it's been a few days since I started this dress I started working on it during the weekend worked on it as much as I could and now I'm trying to finish it after work on the work week so it's taken a little bit of time each step seems to just take longer than I think it's going to but I think we're getting pretty close uh, let's see where are we at well I've pinned the cuffs to the sleeves want to get those on there yeah, it's right sides together. Gonna flip these out like that when they're sewn. Not sure if that's the best way to do that, but I'm gonna try. Ooh, and then let's take a look at the neck. Okay, I'm using my favorite single fold bias tape. Let's see if we can get a good look at that. All right. Well, if you haven't done, let's focus in a little better. If you haven't done single fold, bias tape before. I'll try to link a tutorial for you because this stuff is cool. I've pinned it to the front of the dress. So pinned it to the right side. And then I'm going to be stitching in the ditch, so to speak. So this top crease that's formed when you unfold the bias tape, I'm going to stitch along there. When we're done with that, let's see if I can just put in a pin to imitate stitches. Okay, so pretend I stitched right there. So I will have stitching right where that pin is. Next, I'll flip the whole thing over, pin it to the back, stitch along the top a little bit, and get a finished seam. I'll show you what that looks like when that's all done, but that's my super rough, sketchy explanation of what I'll be doing there. And then, of course, Oh boy, <laughs> gotta try on the dress and hem it, cause there is a lot of skirt, oh my word. Oh, might have made it a little too long. And even though I took off, oof, about a foot and a half of skirt fabric, there is a lot of skirt. So, uh, sleeves, neckline, hemming, wish me luck. Oh.
basil, but I can smell the basil. It's amazing. And squash. We're going to squash a lot this week. And I'm going to chard and I'm going to connect with my inner kale person, which I'm not a kale person necessarily, but it's beautiful. So now I'm a kale person. So, farm stand hall. Thank you to the, the hardworking folks who do this beautiful stuff. I want to go home and cook now. Okay, so we just left the farm stand. We've now driven to our favorite ever in the world um, barn farm stand that sells pumpkins and apples in the fall. And we're about to dive in. There are a lot of people, so we're gonna have to mask up and not take too many pictures. Kind of find ourselves a pumpkin and make space for other people. But oh, what a beautiful day. So much fun. Gotta say my dress has been super comfy. I love it. It's a little swooshy, but who doesn't love swooshy? All right, it's time to pumpkin. Let's go. Well, there you have it crafters hope you enjoyed this prairie dress adventure i found those projects kind of strangely satisfying although you know it always takes me longer than i think it's going to but working with this pattern i felt pretty confident like i felt like all of the steps that i needed to do were ones that were kind of within my tool belt of skills and if i wanted to make modifications i felt like i could do that and get the results I wanted. So I've really been enjoying wearing my dress. It's been super comfy and ah, kind of perfect for today. Big treat to be able to go and get some produce and get a cute little pumpkin and all sorts of good fall stuff. So I feel very fall in the mood here. Um, I think we're off to go get maybe a fall beverage or so and then head home to figure out what I'm gonna cook with my produce so I need need to go do that but if you guys found this video this journey amusing punch that like button to let me know and subscribe for more videos from partners in craft lots more costumes and fall holiday crafty goodness coming your way so hope you guys are having a wonderful day staying safe and enjoying a beautiful October see you guys next time bye